Good afternoon. We're going to get started here. Count us in. I just need the date, April. Good afternoon. Welcome to City Council meeting of April 8th. I would ask that you all rise for the singing of our national anthem. Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see the right, the true north strong and free. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard. Thank you to the National Film Board for the Images of Our Country and to our very own Tennille Town, Towns for the singing of our national anthem. Now I'd like to take the opportunity to read our land acknowledgement. The city respectfully acknowledges the Beaver, Cree, Dene, and Métis people as the original caretaker of these lands and surrounding areas. We are grateful to live, learn, work, and play on Treaty 8 territory within Turtle Island and acknowledge these lands have been home to diverse and sovereign First Nations and Inuit nations since time immemorial. Moving on, I'll look for the adoption of the previous council minutes, recognizing Councillor O'Connor. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I'd like to move that council adopt the minutes of city council meeting held March 25th as presented. Thank you for that, Councillor O'Connor. That motion is in order. I will call the question. Please vote. Mayor Clayton in favor. Pressy in favor. And that carries unanimously. Now moving on to the adoption of today's agenda, recognizing Councillor Blackmore. I actually pushed my button during the national anthem to see when Mike pushes his button. <laughs> so and clearly it's before then. As soon as he sits down. Um, so I move that the agenda be adopted as presented. That motion is in order. I see no one in the queue with questions, debate, or concerns, so I will call the question. Please vote. Mayor Clayton in favor. Bressy in favor. O'Connor in favor. <laughs> and that carries unanimously. Moving on to the delegation portion of our meeting today, for those who are watching online, Delegations are welcome to the afternoon session at 3 p.m. Or if we're having an evening session, which we're not today, um, if we were, you're welcome to come to the 6 p.m. session. So today we have one group who let us know ahead of time. And if you're looking to come to speak to council, sorry, there is an online form. It's relatively easy to fill out. We just ask you to fill it out ahead of time. So there is one group that let us know that they were coming to council today, the Grand Prairie Air Show Committee. I see in brackets Mr. Bruce Tatry. So come on up, sir. Uh, if you could, I'll turn your mic on. If you, could, you and your guests could introduce yourselves for those who are watching at home. Take five minutes to address council, and then council may have questions. Great. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. And thank you. Oh, hey. I can just about swallow it at this point. <laughs> Uh, thank you for allowing us the time to give you a little bit of information on our delegate or our, uh, air show. We we did apply for your large scale tourism grant, and appreciate the opportunity to give a little bit more insight than just what's in the application. This is my uh, I'm the event organizer, and, and Amanda Airshuk is our deputy organizer, or, or sorry, director, event director. Jeez, and uh, she's uh, basically her and I are. <laughs> attached at the hip here for the last couple of months trying to get this air show off the ground. So um, with respect to the show itself, I, 
I, I don't think, I think everyone's heard of an air show. It's, it's, uh, it's an event that's sort of unique. And, and in our area, we haven't had one for quite a while. There's, I think 2005 might've been the last one, but it's hard to tell who or when those dates were. Anyways, we basically decided to organize an air show uh, as, a, as a group of Rotarians and several from all of the clubs really to do something different um, that hopefully will generate interest within the city for a couple of causes. One of them is our decoy community hub project, which the city is, has been generous about from the start, but ooh, that project is a, is a $3.8 million renovation for the decoy armories building downtown. And we've been working at it for about five years, but uh, due to COVID and everything else, we needed to do something to kind of give it a little more spark on the fundraising side. So rather than doing a golf tournament and a silent auction sort of thing, we thought we'd tackle an air show. And uh, an air show has a lot of moving parts. It's, it's uh, performers of all kinds and uh, as well as all your typical large scale event sort of logistics that are involved. So definitely a, a fairly large undertaking and it's going very well. We have a fully booked show as far as performers go. We have the grounds layout, everything sort of finalized for the most part, other than just ground truthing a few things. And uh, these grants are, are sort of the cash that we need out front to m make it happen. So we had some cash from our previous fundraising to sort of get deposits set and, and get the show booked, but we will need a lot more money in the end to pay the performers for their full act, which is where this large scale tourism grant will come in. Um, and uh, so I'm not sure if you want us to go in. I'd love to tell you everything about the air show and really push it, to be honest, uh, get people excited. I don't know if that's the forum for this, if you want to know about it a little bit. So, okay, yeah. Uh, why don't we, um, if you have a couple high level things, great, but I do have a full queue, so yeah. probably we'll get answered through questions. Sure. But if you want a high level, how many days, how many visitors do you expect, uh, et cetera? Okay, so high level, um, it, the show itself is two days, July 27th and 28th. We have a practice day on the 26th, so you will see a lot of weird birds in the air for three days. Um, birds being planes, just being so planes, yeah, sorry, yes, jets and, and things. Uh, but two day show, uh, we're conservatively, we use the uh, International Convention of Air, air Show Council uh, metrics to come up with. Um, the number that we're expecting for the gate. So conservatively, we said 10,000 people will come through the door. And that's based on your guys' uh, numbers for what the Grand Prairie area is, recent studies times the percentages that they come up with. They, these guys do a lot of air shows, so it's uh, we're confident in the number. And it could be north of there, but let's say 10,000 people is what we're expecting over two days. And uh, as far as acts, we've got civilian acts, so, uh, we got a jet car, we got a parachute team, we have wing walkers, we have sailplanes that'll do 360s. We have uh, multi-ships or two-ship acts that are tumblers, lots of smoke, and we have um, jets, T-33 jets that'll fly 600 knots, kind of close quarters with the crowd and everything else. On top of that, we have uh, B-25 that we'll be doing a STEM program with where you can tour the B-25. You get to see it fly as well, but it's a big World War II bomber that you'll be able to tour. And then the kids will be able to learn some riveting and some Morris code underneath the wing. Uh, we'll have the yield, RCMP yield program, which is, uh, they'll probably drag race one of our performers. And, uh, and also the kids can learn simulators, simulated drunk driving and things like this for, for uh, learning. Then we also have some USAF, or sorry, United States Air Force planes, uh, four F-22 Raptors and four A-10 Thunderbolts or Warthogs, if you know what those are, are coming. We're waiting to hear what one CAD's sending. They, we don't have a lot in Canada to give, and, and there's a lot of theaters across the globe right now that we're supporting. So we won't know till six weeks out if, if we're receiving anything from the Royal Canadian Air Force. Um, that's just the way it goes. We have asked for Hercules and a Griffin and a few other things that we can, but we don't know. Um, we've got, we're in talks with the Loyal Edmonton Regiment about doing a kind of Delta team, shoot them up live thing where they take some hostages and roll out and sort of contain a area like you'd see a military do. 
we, again, those Delta teams and things that are with everything going on where they can't commit, but they'd sure like to do it as well as their color guard and uh, hopefully their drum line just to kick off the show. We will have the, the Canadian recruiting office will be there because they would love to sign up some local kids. And we have part of our show is the decoy. And the other part is to sort of raise awareness for the Canadian Armed Forces and, and sort of send the message that freedom isn't free. We all experience it. But these people that you'll get to see at the show are dealing with the making it happen. So um, I think that's the the key. We're, we all, we've also asked for tanks and labs and things for setup. Again, just depends. We, we don't have what the U.S. has. The U.S., you can call their base, and if they're free, they're going to come up. With Canada, they just don't have the assets. So we're still in the planning stages. We have a fully booked two-and-a-half-hour air show. Outside of the air show, we've got the key Sayers motocross team, so you'll get to see freestyle motocross, bouncy castles, face painting. We've got a, a pretty good vendor area, like farmer's market, so you'll be able to buy some stuff and look at some stuff. A lot of awareness groups, we're giving them free entry. So if they want to raise awareness, they can put up a booth and you can talk to them about it. So lots to do that has nothing to do with airplanes because some people don't, aren't, maybe aren't into airplanes, but they want something to do with the kids. Tickets are 40 bucks for general admission and uh, we're hoping that we get a good crowd. So. I think you answered lots of questions that probably people in the queue had. I do have a couple uh, members of council. Recognizing Councillor O'Connor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Clay. Uh, thank you, Bruce and Amanda. This uh, sounds very, very exciting. Uh, my question relates about the static. Will some of these, the warthogs and stuff, be on the ground for people to walk around? Yeah, 100%. Uh, so all of those that I listed, You'll, you'll be able to see all, all of the planes in the show will move from their performances to the static area and you will be able to walk in amongst all the planes. Not sure how close you'll be able to get to the F-22s because they're still classified and they're 360 million bucks a piece, but you will get to walk up a ramp and look at them from a little ways away. Uh, the A-10s, they, they're actually, uh, they won't be making A-10s anymore and this is the last year you'll get to see them at a show. So. They don't even need a hangar. They said, we'll stay out in the tarmac. So, yes, you'll be able to walk in and see all these planes up close. Yep. And uh, will uh, performances be repeated the second day? Yes. So, same same. It's just so if you miss Saturday, you can still see it on Sunday. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. Uh, thanks for coming in, Amanda and Bruce. Uh, nice to see you both again. Uh, just a couple quick questions in regards to the air show. So you mentioned uh, uh, $40 general admission. Do you have any family pricing, or is it just $40 for everyone who walks through the gate? Yeah, no. All we have is early bird pricing. So the, there's uh, $25 tickets for um, seniors and youth. Uh, 40 bucks for your regular mission. And there's a, a VIP sort of uh, premier seating area for $75, which gets you private or you're in a fenced off area with you. You don't have to bring your own chair. You have your private kind of upscale bathrooms and, and your own bar. And then there's still all those same things for general admission. Just you bring your chair, you, you pick your spot in the field because you're looking up and, uh, and uh, that's the differences. So, okay. No, thank yeah. you for that. And uh, this uh, air show, is it reoccurring? Like, is it? Do you plan to go year over year over year? Uh, yeah. So biennial is the plan. So every two years, uh, just because it's a lot of planning goes into an air show, and and honestly, to get out in front to get acts like the Thunderbirds or Snowbirds and stuff, we were late a little. We didn't know it took two years, but we would like two years to to do that going forward, and so. So happy to hear you say that. As I was like looking into it, I was like, most air shows are every other year. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. You're welcome. We actually schedule the Blue Angels, the Thunderbirds, and the Snowbirds two years out. So we were already when we were in at the International Air Show Convention, they were already already scheduling the the jet teams already a year out in front of us. So just didn't know. Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Um, Thanks for the presentation. It's good. I learned a lot from your presentation. My question is, how are you navigating this air show with our air service, Air Canada, WestJet? 
Um, so there will be no interruption to commercial service to the airport at that time. Not only will it not interrupt uh, commercial air service, we also will not interrupt any traffic going in and out of the airport at that time either. So it's very important, number one priority, to make sure that our airport continues to operate as it needs to operate. Perfect. Happy to hear that. Thank you. Councilor Bressy. Great, thank you. I'm just trying to understand what the layout on the land looks like. So what is the field that people are sitting on and where's parking happening? Uh, so parking will be, there'll be a couple locations within, within Grand Prairie. The, the main parking will be out of the Grand Prairie Regional College for those two days. There's 1,100 stalls there. Then the Composite High School um, is, is another spot that we have available, but we just got to finalize the, with, with the school board that that's we can have all the spots because there's spots available. Tentatively, they said, yeah, it sounds good. we got to make sure that nothing is booked in the city for those places before our show. And then we're also uh, looking at the St. Joe's on the south side, that parking lot in there. Same idea. We just have to clear it. But we need approximately 16 to 1,700 stalls available to us. So we get 1,100 of them. We're locked down for that, and we're still working on the other two smaller parking lots. There'll be shuttles that leave from those to the air show so we can control the gate and and the flow in and out and and honestly the the airport parking there isn't a lot at the airport um we'd be parking on grass there is an area available we'd be parking on grass and we're worried if we have three days of rain although we need we need all the rain we can get it wouldn't be very good for our air show getting a honda civic out of the fields so we're trying to keep it on dry ground can i ask go ahead yeah you bet uh, great thank you that's 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 exciting mm. uh, I'm also curious, what's the what's the risk of, sm of smoke? Like, at what point do you have to cancel the show because there's no visibility for jets? Or the, there is a number for that, and our we, we've hired an air boss who's the guy that handles who flies and who doesn't fly, as well as we have the director of the um, of the, the airport on our board. I, I don't know, like I know. Like say with rodeo, because I have something to do with rodeo, that when it's a seven, the horses can't run. I have no idea what that means for an air for an airplane. I, I think it's visibility more than anything for us, and I just don't know the number. But we have a guy that knows the number. I mean, this is a, a valid concern, for sure. We're, we're using up tarmac space, and we're having an air show right when the place could be on fire. But there's nothing... We, we can't control that, so we're pushing forward and just uh, doing a, you know... Open and praying. And we have insurance, obviously, for the show if we can't go. Let's give you my very next question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, echoing, I'm just going to jump in, Councillor Blackmore, echoing uh, or along the same vein of Councillor Bressy. In the large scale tourism criteria, it mentions that the uh, event must happen regardless, rain or shine. So, what would be the plan for a not a smoke event, but a significant three day rain event? Would you postpone? How would you so we would that? Um, we would still be able to proceed um, in the rain. People would have to bring their rain gear and we can still have a static display at that point. Um, we can still ha still have all our vendors. We can still have our food trucks and we can have um, our static displays going. Um, it won't be nearly as exciting as if we get to watch everything in the sky um, and then there are loud noises and flying by, but um, making do with the performance schedules that we do have, we will still get to offer the, the static displays. Great, thank you. Councillor Blackmore. Could you just say the dates again, please, just Stuart? Sure, uh, July 27th short, and 28th. Yeah. 27th to the 28th. Yeah. Okay, well, I see no one else in the queue, so I thank you for coming. Uh, delegation business is dealt with at the end, towards our end of our meeting, and our agenda is not that long, so you're more than welcome to stick around, or uh, if you'd like to leave, you're more than welcome to leave. Someone will follow up with you uh, following this meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Moving on to reports, item number seven in your uh, package, Council. First report today, item 7.1, Chief Bylaw Enforcement Officer appointment. And I will turn that over to Chief Lemieux for introduction. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So uh, this appointment uh, is in order since uh, Mr. Mike Lefebvre, who was our Chief Bylaw Enforcement Officer until recently, has now moved to the Grand Prairie Police Service. So Helen Napier is now Managing Director overseeing Grand Prairie Enforcement Services, and uh, we're recommending that Council appoint Helen Napier as their Chief Bylaw Enforcement Officer for the City of Grand Prairie, effective April 8, 2024. 
Okay, opportunity for questions for administration, recognizing, uh, no. Uh, now, seeing no one in the queue with questions, um, opportunity for business arising, recognizing Councillor O'Toole. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I move that Council appoint Helen Napier as the Chief Bylaw Enforcement Officer for the City of Grand Prairie, effective April 8th, 2024. Thank you for that. That motion is in order. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call the question. O'Connor in favor. And that carries unanimously. Moving on to item 7.2, the coordinated care campus renaming. Ms. Hughes, a moment to get set up and turn this over to Chief Lemieux for introduction. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So, uh, Wendy Hughes, our Director of Housing and Homeless Initiatives, has prepared a report for you uh, with a recommendation to rename the Coordinated Care Campus. So, I'll ask uh, Wendy to walk us through the report. Welcome, Ms. Hughes. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, administration and the renaming subcommittee worked to provide council with a number of options to rename the coordinated care campus. The renaming subcommittee represented uh, various uh, relevant stakeholders, including one coordinated care campus advisory committee member, one city council member, um, two indigenous representatives, as well as various city department representatives, including communications, marketing, and housing and homeless initiatives. Since 2021, the project has seen many changes and has remained flexible to community needs. Notably, the shift in to include a recovery-oriented system of care. Um, as such, the subcommittee worked on reviewing previous name submissions while exploring new alternative names. The objective of the renaming subcommittee is to provide options that would best fit the full utilization of the building and to best reflect the significance of the program. Other considerations of the new name include included uh, legacy, context, values, and would be easy to identify, recognize, and pronounce. The renaming subcommittee also considered indigenous context, meaning and or relevance. The new name is required for administration to proceed with um, marketing, communication, signage, website changes, and to prepare for the completion of the municipal move within the next couple of weeks. The renaming subcommittee reviewed researched meanings and definitions and evaluated all options. The renaming subcommittee then voted to advance the final three naming options for council's consideration. Number one was Cedar Point. Cedar has ensured the survival of people for thousands of years and has become a powerful symbol of strength and revitalization. The deep respect for Cedar is rich in tradition and continues to be culturally spiritually and economically important. Cedar is often used in indigenous and cultural practices. As with all four medicine plants, including tobacco, sweetgrass, and sage, cedar can be used for smudging and healing um, purification and protection. Beyond indigenous relevance, cedar is a hardy tree with roots that signify stability, family, community, and life. This option would translate easily to represent both the social housing and municipal operations. There are a number of names containing cedar and, and it ranks high in popularity. There is one registered trademark with cedar included in a uh, US pencil company. However, there is no risk associated with uh, cedar for the intent of this project and building. Number two is Mosaic Lodge. Mosaic is a picture pattern made by placing together small pieces of glass, stone, and other material of different colors, shapes, and sizes. Mosaic symbolizes the tapestry of diverse people which make up community. This speaks to the inclusive community in which we live. This name would be easily identifiable with the housing program. And the name also suggests a building and operation that values collaboration and multiculturalism, thus creating a welcoming and engaging atmosphere for those interacting with local government services. 
There are a number of, men, a number of mentions of mosaic in businesses, mainly in fishing lodges. There are no registered trademarks. However, uh, there is a mosaic program um, which is led by the mustard seed in other locations. And then the last um, option would be Grand Hope Landing. Hope is an optimistic state of mind and is based on an expectation of positive outcomes with respects to uh, events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. As a verb, its definition includes expect with confidence and to cherish a desire with anticipation. This name would highly uh, signify the supportive housing programming. However, it may be less focus on the municipal departments. However, Grand Hope Landing could effectively communicate its role as a catalyst for positive change, a source of inspiration, and a hub for community connections and growth. The renaming subcommittee then engaged the Coordinated Care Campus Advisory Committee, the Coordinated Care Campus Resident Council, and the Mustard Seed to seek their final input. The results of the engagement survey are as followed, follows. So first is a Cedar Point at 39%, second is Mosaic Lodge at 36%, and third is Grand Hope Landing at 24%. Based on the work of the renaming subcommittee and feedback um, gathered from participant groups, the name recommended is Cedar Point. Therefore, administration recommends council approve the renaming subcommittee's recommendation, Cedar Point, as presented. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks for your presentation. I'll open it up to council with question for uh, opportunity for questions. Recognizing Councillor Blackmore. Um, I'm ready to make a motion if. That's where you're at. Back to you in a moment, okay? okay. Councillor Berg, questions for administration. Uh, actually, I didn't have any questions. Again, I was hoping to do business as I was on this uh, committee. But um, one of the things that I did want to just comment on is I did really enjoy the process that you put forward because a number of names had come up, and I, although you'd narrowed it down to about three, I think we had about 20 that uh, we'd worked on and we vetted them to the positives, but we also thoroughly uh, debated negative connotations and possible negative nicknames because every building and institution somehow seems to get a nickname. So uh, again, that was part of the process too, was finding something that was universally acceptable, positive, and didn't create a stigma for the people or the building themselves. So it's uh, it, it was a wonderful process. I've been through it in private business before, but never on a government level. So my compliments to you and the team. Thank you. Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Thank you for that report. Um, can you just reiterate how you're going to balance, perhaps if it if this goes to Cedar Point, with enforcement services and the municipal departments? How, how does that balance? You had said a bit of it, how you're going to have that inclusion piece. How are people going to know that enforcement services and city departments are part of this Cedar Point? Ms. Hughes. Thank you through the chair. So we're going to do it effectively through signage. And of course, there's going to be communications. Um, we will have the web page that's updated. And then of course, um, the um, departments that do reside in the building, we work closely with the vulnerable sector and that is including enforcement services, mobile outreach, G-PREP, um, community social development and the Grand Prairie Police Service. So will there be signage on the outside of the building as well? Yes. Indicating the departments? Correct. Thank you. All right, Councillor Blackmore. Uh, because Councillor Berg was on this committee and wanted to do the business, I would certainly step aside for him. Councillor Berg. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I would like to move, and thank you, Councillor Blackmore. I would like to move the council approve the renaming of the Coordinated Care Campus to Cedar Point. Okay, that motion is in order, discussion or debate. Seeing none, I'll call the question. Councillor Thiessen, how do you vote? <laughs> and that carries unanimously. Thank you for your information and your presentation today, Ms. Hughes. Moving on to item 7.3, uh, Forest Resource Improvement Association of Alberta, uh, community 
Fire Guard program. I will turn this one over to Mr. Lemieux for introduction. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So uh, in front of you is a uh, recommendation for a council motion to show support for an application. And the reason it's in front of council today is because there's a tight deadline. The deadline for submission of the grant is April the 12th. Uh, the Forest Resource Improvement Association of Alberta, or FRIA, has uh, just opened up a new grant uh, program, which is called the Community Fire Guard Program. So basically this program would um, allow us to hire a forestry consultant to help us evaluate vegetation densities using current GIS data and identify priority areas for uh, firefighting access. Now, when you talk about a fire guard, you might wonder, well, fire guard in a municipality, uh, think more of it as a narrow access for fire protection. So there are several areas within our community where access is an issue for uh, the fire department. So it'd be more like uh, access for the fire department in uh, high hazard areas. So the uh, grant application closed on April the 12th and uh, FRIA uh, requires a council motion that indicates support for the application and that's why this motion is in front of you and I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right. Uh, recognizing Councillor Blackmore. I'm curious, Mr. Lemieux, um, what the uh, amount of dollars is we're looking at. Mr. Le uh, yes, yeah, so we're still working through the process in terms of how much does a forestry consultant uh, cost. What I will say is that there will be no cost to the city. Our contribution will be gifting kind in terms of staff time to work with the consultant. But I don't have the exact number, but I will try and get a number for council. Can I make the motion? Do you have other people? Yes. Go ahead. How about I decide? <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Blackmore. Okay. So with the mayor's approval and Councillor O'Connor's approval, I will move that council is committed to support the city's grant application to the Forest Resource Improvement Association of Alberta, also known as FRIA, Communities Fire Guard Program. Thank you for that. That motion is in order. Opportunity for discussion or debate. Mm -hmm. Seeing no one in the queue, I'll call the question. Pressy in favor. And that carries unanimously. Moving on to committee business. First item of committee business, C Council Committee, the whole held March 27th. I'll recognize Councillor Bressy for this one. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I would move the Council accept the minutes of the Council Committee of the whole. Perfect. So that's adopt the, com the meetings of the Council Committee of the whole meeting held March 27th. As presented, seeing no one in the queue, I'll call the question. Pressing in favor. That carries unanimously. There is one item of business coming out of that committee uh, meeting, a level of service for emergency social services, the Alberta Municipalities Resolution. And um, I'll look for introduction from Chief McEachran. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is an item that we're bringing forward. Uh, it is a resolution for Alberta Munis um, to provide, establish a provincial level of service for emergency social services. Uh, this is a resolution that is being supported by other members of GPREP as well um, and has been passed by the uh, County of Grand Prairie um, as a resolution already. Um, we're just bringing this forward for Council's consideration. Perfect. Thanks for that introduction. Opportunity for questions. If not, I'll be looking for some business arising from this item. Councillor Bressy. Great. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I would move the Council endorse the establishing a provincial level of service for emergency social services, Alberta Municipalities Resolution. Perfect. Thank you uh, for that motion. That is in order. Call the question. That's carried unanimously. Thank you for that. Uh, item number, moving on to item 8.2, the Invest GP committee meeting held April 2nd. Looking for uh, to Councillor Blackmore for introduction. Um, thank you, Mayor Clayton. I would move council adopt the minutes of the Invest GP committee meeting held April 2nd as presented. Thank you for that. Seeing no one in the queue, I'll call the question. 
please vote. That carries unanimously. Any highlights for your meeting, Councillor Blackmore? Um, thank you. Uh, be, due to uh, changes at the provincial government on March 18th um, to the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program, otherwise known as AAIP, um, our uh, rural renewal stream program is being reviewed. Uh, there won't be an update uh, today about those numbers. Um, and once that review is complete and we're back on track, we'll be able to uh, bring those numbers back again. Um, Invest, develop, Invest GP staff have been have met with um, a physician who's considering relocating to our city. Uh, phys meetings have also been underway with uh, the surrounding First Nations to further knowledge sharing and building relationships. Work continues on the regional workforce front with plans to launch a workforce focused website uh, in a few weeks. And, and then in an in investment attraction, that's almost a tongue twister. Um, productive meetings were held at the World of Ag Tech Future Foods Conference and at CIRA Conference in Houston. Planning is ongoing for the Canadian Hydrogen Conference, which is in about two weeks. Um, the Economic Developers, Developers of Alberta Conference, um, the Site Link, Site Selector Forum, and Peace Region Energy Show, which are all upcoming events. Um, as far as art, art, arts and culture goes, uh, upcoming events in the city include uh, the Visaki Celebration, April 20th, Mini Pop Kids, Mar May 24th, Dinosaur Worldwide, May 26th, Stompede Bust Out, May 28th, Pride Society Rainbow Bright Teen Dinner, Teen Dance and Party and White Dinner on May 31st and June 1st, and the Queen Tribute on June 3rd. Um, and throughout the month away, uh, throughout the month of May, there are many uh, grad celebrations taking place at the Bennett Center. So congratulations to all those two 2024 Grand Prairie and district grads. And that concludes my report. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. I'll move on to the next item of business, which is the uh, item 8.3, the Financial Administrative Services Committee meeting held April 2nd, and look to Councillor Plot for introduction. Thanks, Mayor Clayton. I would just make a motion that Council adopt the minutes of the Financial Administrative Services Committee held April 2nd, 2024, as presented. Motion is in order. Seeing no one in the queue with discussion or debate, I'll call the question. Please vote. Councillor Plot in favor. That motion carries unanimously. Any highlights from your meeting, Councillor Plot? Yeah, Mayor Clayton, there was a several. Um, we had some service area updates from Chief Whiteway, um, assessment and taxation. The residential RFIs have been mailed out to areas that will be reinspected this year, and we're encouraging the residents to fill out these forms and submit them back uh, or complete them online. Um, administration is still finalizing our year in audit. We presented the committee soon. Uh, through procurement, there are currently nine bids on the market, and we had a discussion um, due to our deciding not to go ahead with our stormwater utility model, uh, the potential of a $3 million shortfall in this budget. So we'll be having more conversations about that. But uh, Chief White, we queued it up for us to get our thinking caps on of how we're going to deal with that moving forward. So that will be coming to the next council meeting. And that's my report. Perfect. Thanks for that, Councillor Plot. Moving on to item 8.4, the Public and Protective Services Committee meeting held April 2nd. And I will look to Councillor O'Connor for introduction. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I'd like to have council adopt the minutes of the Public and Protective Services Committee meeting held April 2nd as presented. Perfect. That motion is in order. Seeing no one in the queue with discussion or debate, I'll call the question. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. Councillor O'Connor, you had one item of business. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Clayton. I'd like to move that Council approve allocation of 2024 large-scale tourism grant funding in the amount of $50,000 to the 2024 Grand Con event. Perfect. That motion is in order. Opportunity for discussion or debate. 
Seeing none, I'll call the question. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. Councilor Bressy. Great. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I'm just wondering what the plan is for the air show now that they've made a presentation to council. My understanding is the committee wanted more information from them. Is Are we hoping to talk about potentially funding them today? Or are we hoping they come back to future committee? Just what's the plan for them? My plan was to see what came out of the delegation portion of our meeting. <laughs> well, I am happy to make a motion. Happy to waste the, the delegation motion. portion of our meeting. Oh, I get what you're saying. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any highlights from your meeting, Councillor O'Connor? <laughs> Mayor Clayton, uh, feisty list today. Okay, um, I had three items. Um, one, the Youth Career Expo was a huge success. 99 exhibitors, 2,400 youth, 33 schools, participation by many city, fire, police, and enforcement. And in speaking to some of the businesses, they were thrilled with the uptake and uh, very positive. Uh, two, uh, the Design Works hosted the under 15 female A tier 2 uh, provincial championships and the GP Knights took gold. Woo! So um, on the sports and development, wellness and culture, on April 13th and 14th, uh, there is going to be uh, an invitation to the community to come and paint a puck, which will go into creating a large collage in um uh, honor of the Aboriginal Hockey Championships later in the first part of May. So this is a collaborative project between the Art Gallery, uh, Grantburg Gallery, and the city, and the pucks were donated by uh, Canadian Tire. So looking forward to seeing that. And the last thing is on a April 9th and 10th, uh, there's going to be two open houses in regards to feedback on the museum expansion. And that's my report, Mayor Clayton. Perfect. Thanks. Last time I counted, that was four, but that's okay. Moving to 8.5, Strategy and Communication Services Committee meeting uh, of April 2nd, turning it over to Councillor O'Toole for introduction. Council adopt the minutes of the Strategy and Communication Services Committee meeting held April 2nd as presented. Thanks for that. That motion is in order. Seeing no one in the queue with discussion or debate, call the question. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. Any highlights from your meeting, Councillor O'Toole? Yes. I'm just trying to get through here. Just come on. Uh, executive Services and Strategy Administration hosted a safe uh, State of the City event in partnership with Northwestern Polytech and the Chamber of Commerce and the Grand Prairie Police Service. This event was available to view, is now available to view online. And under the city clerk's direction, uh, the, the 2024 municipal census project is on track. Illuminators will be canvassing the community starting May 1st, placing door knockers on every residence that has a unique pin to the address so people can go online and complete their survey from May 1st to May 24th. Enumerators will return after that date, going to door to door to, for those who need assistance. And digitalization of the computer or com corporate records is progressing very well and will d reduce the storage space and enhance accessibility. And uh, there's more to that, but you could read that online. Thanks for your report, Councillor Tool. Moving along, no items of correspondence today into item number 10 now, delegation business, the Grand Prairie Air Show. Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. I would love to move that uh, council um, that council allocate to 2024 large-scale tourism grant funding in the amount of fifty thousand dollars to the 2024 Grand Prairie Regional Air Show. Just to, just to speak to this, uh, a city of our size, I think you just kind of expect there to be an air show in our city of our size every couple of years, and 
So in some ways, I think this is table stakes for our community. I'm glad to see it coming back. But I also love that this is an ambitious air show. It's the acts sound sound great. What I love most about this, though, is same with Grand Con, that it's a nonprofit association using this to fundraise to build their programs that will go have ongoing benefit to our community beyond the air show. So I hope it's a phenomenal success. I hope it's something that draws people from out of our region to see these awesome jets flying. And I hope it's something that raises a lot of money for the great programs that happen at Decoy Armory. That being said, you always need seed funding to get these events going off the ground. So I think this would be a great investment of council's funding. So I hope that this will be supported. Thank you for that. Um, fine, business is on the table, but if council did have questions for administration, um, feel free to jump in the queue with that. Otherwise, we can open it up for discussion or debate on the motion. Uh, recognizing Councillor O'Toole. You know, one thing that didn't come out of the delegation was this is the 100th anniversary of the Canadian Air Force. And uh, there's a lot of air shows that are very busy uh, down east, and not too many are that busy because the Air Force has chose to stick to the east and not to the west. So we're very fortunate to get the planes that we're getting, and uh, we have a full show. Like, we're scheduled for almost three hours of entertainment. So thank you. And when Councillor O'Connor speaks about we, he personally himself is volunteering for the committee. Um, this isn't a City of Grand Prairie driven initiative. So uh, opportunities for questions, discussion, debate. Seeing none, I'll call the question. Oh, sorry, Councillor O'Toole. My apologies. And that carries unanimously. Uh, no unfinished business, no public hearings. There is no afternoon session. So I'll go to a council round table and I'll start with Councillor Thiessen. I think you should have started at the other end because uh, I'm losing my, my neighbor over here. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, I don't have much to, to update everyone. It was a rather, uh, I don't know, uneventful uh, a couple of weeks. There was some events, but... Uh, First thing I'll touch on is, uh, and I guess I'll work my way backwards, is today uh, we had, uh, looking at the museum expansion, so we had pretty much a full house of council members and some administration to discuss kind of what we'd like to see in the museum expansion project, ask some big questions and, and all that stuff. So just a big thank you to Charles uh, for helping us be a part of the vision in uh, expanding the museum and finding a layout that works for everyone in the community. Uh, on the 28th, another highlight was uh, I got to do another City Hall classroom uh, with Kateri Mission School, this time with Councillor Berg for the first time. I think it was his second time doing it, but it was a nice learning experience as counselors bounce off of each other, the ideas and their comfortabilities, and I think the kids were well served that day and they had lots of great questions and, uh, and a good guide in the city manager chair by the name of Grant Berg, uh, helping out the mayors there. So. Uh, Always a great time and always good to help kids learn. Uh, finally, um, I'll just talk about my external appointment com appointed committee, which is the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance uh, over the past couple of weeks. I had meetings for the Integrated Watershed Management Plan Steering Committee as well as the Technical Committee work. We brought that all forward to the Mighty Peace Watershed Alliance about a week later on March 26th where we had our, our uh, regular scheduled meeting. Uh, one of the things that I'd just like to highlight here is maybe people don't look at water as a resource, but it is definitely a very valuable resource and growing in value every year. Uh, but groundwater is the world's most is extracted raw material. Uh, to put that in context, uh, about on average annually, about 982 kilometers cubed of water is withdrawn from the ground every year year in this country. So it's pretty incredible that uh, that, that, that number. Uh, and now we still have water, considering that we're going through a drought pretty soon here right away, as we're told. Uh, but part of that, uh, of course, we reviewed the work of the Technical Committee, the Integrated Watershed Management Plan, the health of the watershed, we're getting ready for AGM as well. Uh, one thing we got was uh, a really awesome presentation from uh, a couple members of the uh, from Alberta Environment and Protected Areas, uh, and what they were giving us the research on was the, the levels of nutrients, metals, and other stuff that they're finding at the mouth of the Slave River as well as the Athabasca River, looking for largely contaminants and stuff in there. Um, some some metals to note because. 
I've sat on Paza, I've sat on Mighty Peace Watershed now for almost 10 years, um, and I've always been pushing to do more testing on metals. And at least with Paza, they said that it's not there for, for the air to detect metals in the air. But I always thought that with water and the ground surrounding water, we might be able to find metal contamination in and around there. I know that we test for some of that stuff here at the city. Uh, the testing for metals though, is really expensive, but I was really buoyed after we received this presentation from Alberta Environment and Protected Areas that the testing that they were doing along the Slave River uh, was also including the testing of certain metals that I've been advocating for for about a decade, strontium, aluminum, silver, and barium. And uh, they're looking into that and receiving lots of high levels of that. Now, some of it comes from the air. Some of it comes from oil and gas production uh, upstream. Uh, but these are all important things uh, that we should be measuring when we're talking about the health of our watershed. Besides that, uh, we set our date for the, the uh, AGM, which is coming up in June. And the final thing uh, that we have is uh, we have sent the integrated watershed management plan after 10 years of being out there back to the printers so we can see our new goals, our new actions, and the work that we've done throughout the years. And I hope to bring that to Council soon. Thank you, everyone. That's my report. Thanks for that, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor Tool. Thank you very much, Mayor Clayton. Uh, on the 26th, I attended the State of the City, uh, and uh, that was a very, very good event. Uh, it was a little different this year than we've done in the past, but uh, thumbs up from everybody that I know that attended. Uh, I attended also uh, Special Olympics 2025 meeting, uh, the AGM for decoy armories and foundation, and the Accessibility Advisory Committee. Also had a combative sports meeting, and uh, in next week I'll have more uh, information on both the combative sports and the Alberta Bilingual Municipalities Association. This last week I attended the uh, Canadian Recovery Conference. Uh, what a wonderful event. Uh, I met many, many people. They had room for about 1,800, and I think 2,000 plus people showed up. So fire codes were being strictly enforced, which meant sometimes the conferences that you you wanted to get into uh, that were taking place, you couldn't get in because you weren't fast enough. Um, there was ministers there. Uh, in fact, uh, Minister Jason Nixon, Seniors Community Social, was there. Uh, Mike Ellis is involved in the protection. Uh, can't remember what his actual title is but he's the minister. Uh, we had Minister Dan Williams from Alberta, Minister Tim McLeod from Saskatchewan, and Michael De Timpolo from Ontario speaking, Dr. Nathandrel Day, Chief Cody Thomas, Chief Dr. Charles Weaselhead, past Treaty 7 Grand Chief, and Chief Willie Littlechild is a Cree chief. Marshall Smith from the Chief of Staff of Premier's Office, and Tom Cador from the President of the United States Special Envoy, and there was others, there was probably another 25 or 30 speakers that were there. Uh, great presentations, very well attended, and uh, the government talked about the new changes they were gonna do with Alberta uh, Health Services. So uh, I would look forward to it next year, thank you. Councillor Tool, Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, for me as well, I attended the State of the City, and uh, that was a, a great function uh, to hear from our stakeholder partners. And if you didn't um, have an opportunity to go to it, make sure you go on the City YouTube channel to watch it in, in full. Um, additionally, that same day, we went to a... Uh, meeting an information sharing meeting with the county so continuing to build those um, relationships within our uh, community and region um, we work better together uh, I attended the RCMP annual performance and planning um, meeting and so I think here in the near future um, the RCMP will have their public information out so good to hear um, the good things that they're doing 
I attended the opening of the Land Breaths um, at the Grand Prairie Art Gallery, and that is a Treaty 8 exhibition uh, cura curated by Jamie Morse from Ottawa. So she was there to speak to us, um, a fabulous exhibition um, showing showcasing uh, the local and regional Indigenous uh, creations and cultural teachings. Um, so happy to go to that. Make sure you uh, attend. It's free to go and uh, lots to see. And then finally, um, just a reminder for the storm. Uh, the, it's called Tales from the Oilers Celebrity Dinner on Friday, April 19th, 2024 at the Pomeroy at 6 o'clock. Um, Craig McTavish, Jason Strudwick, and Bob Stoffer um, will... Um, bring some stories and entertainment in regards to what is happening with the Oilers. And this all is a fundraiser for the storm. Um, congratulations to the storm for such a fantastic season. Um, they had the most uh, participants as far as uh, people watching the games in, in the AJHL. So happy to hear that. And I look forward to our citizens supporting them in this um, celebrity dinner. Thank you. Thanks for that, Councillor Bosch. Councillor O'Connor. Thank you, Mayor Clayton. Uh, I only have a couple of items. Uh, one, I read the last three chapters of the book that I read during reading week uh, to the Avondale uh, 5 and 6, and they had all kinds of questions. Asked if I was a movie star. That was cool. Yeah. Uh, and then last, I uh, went to the second... <laughs> <laughs> banquet and gala and uh thank you very much that's my report thank you thanks councillor o'connor councillor berg i was hoping there were some stories from that event mike <laughs> um thank you mayor clayton uh attended a few things state of the city which has been covered uh grand prix regional tourism the search for the, an executive director continues however uh they are handing out tourism money for the summer through the Destination Marketing Fund. Uh, so they've been quite generous to date, but there is also significant uh, funds also still in there. So uh, get your applications in. Uh, again, really enjoyed that Kateri Catholic School uh, visit with uh, Councillor Thiessen. We had a lot of fun with that. Um, and hopefully they left uh, with a greater appreciation of City Council. I attended uh, an Aquaterra shareholders meeting uh, uh, as deputy mayor, which I think I have another week left. So uh, it was quite interesting. All is good at Aquaterra, slight change within the board. But some of the questions that came out were uh, or issues were the concern about drought. Uh, the river is low. Um, but also uh, one thing that it was great to hear is that Aquaterra is working closely with G Prep in advance of a another potentially volatile fire season. And last year, uh, when we had the Dunes West fire, a lot of the, the trucks were re getting their water out of the relatively new uh, water station out by Wembley. So again, Aquaterra could potentially again be involved. And so uh, they're working in advance with G Prep. Uh, museum expansion project, uh, really excited to see how that develops. Also attended the Art Gallery of Grand Prairie opening um, just wanted to quickly add that Jamie Morse is actually originally from Lac La Biche here in Alberta, uh, but she has an Indigenous role with the uh, National Gallery in Ottawa as of last year or so. So it's great for her to come back to Alberta and uh, work right here in our own uh, Art Gallery of Grand Prairie. And uh, that, Mayor Clayton, is my report. Thanks for that, Councillor Berg. Moving on to Councillor Plott. Uh, thanks, Mayor Clayton. Yeah, most of the items, uh, the museum, the city of the city address. Um, we also had a uh, infrastructure cost sharing uh, conversation with the, with the county council last week as well that most of us attended. Um, my highlight was the Canadian Recovery Conference um, along with Councillor O'Toole and Councillor Blackmore and our Chief Lemieux and a few employees. Um, first conference I've been to that was more recovery focused than harm reduction focused. So I have to say I really like the theme of it. Um, 
in Daniel Smith's, our premier's opening address, it was quite, kind of surprised to hear that many areas within our addiction reacted deaths have been reduced in the last seven years because that's not the message I think we generally hear. So more good work is being done than, than I feel like we're told about sometimes. Uh, one of the sessions that really hit home to me was mobilizing data to build informed tools Shocking that I'd want data, but uh, what I what, what I what I come out of that call, with that session with was um, really hearing the, the message that we need to treat mental health separately, like we treat physical health. I think so far too often we think they're one size fits all sort of approach. Thirty percent of disability claims are for mental health now. Twenty percent of employers deal with mental health each and every year. So those numbers are continuing to rise. So that was a little bit of an alarming thing to me. Um, Organizational stressors often exceed trauma as a primary contributor to psychological ill health at workplace, which was saddened to me. Uh, I had a good conversation on that with Councillor Blackmore, and I would have thought that, you know, with all of all the, the work we've done on that, that the organizational trauma would be lower than it is. And so that's something we have control over as an organization, and so hopefully we can continue to get better at that. Um, for those that don't know, there's been some work going on with the recovery capital and how the Alberta government's changing. So in spring, they introduced legislation that will enable the, the creation of a new provincial health agency. June 3rd, if legislation is passed, that will establish the corporate structure for Recovery Alberta. And July 1st, Recovery Alberta officially begins delivering mental health service uh, and addiction services in our in our province. So I think that's a positive step in the right direction for our province. So great conference. Um, first time at it, would definitely go back. That's my report. Thanks for your report, Councillor Plot. Councillor Blackbar. Um, thank you, Mayor Clayton. Um, I... Um, I want to thank uh, the mayor and the city manager and the other people who participated in the state of the region, state of the city address. I really liked the format. I thought it was engaging. And uh, I think we all learned things about other organizations such as the Chamber of Commerce and Northwest Polytechnic that we maybe didn't know before. So I thought that was a great event. Um, I attended a downtown association board meeting uh, where um, Grand Prairie Police Service and uh, bylaw enforcement were there to talk about um, the steps that will take place as the um, public security unit moves off of our books and that role downtown is taken over by that police service. Um, I'm uh, encouraged to note that that should be a relatively seamless exchange and uh, the people who uh, live and work downtown will still see good protection and a good level of safety. Um, I did attend the RCMP annual performance review. Uh, I was online. I enjoyed that. Uh, found, I always find those events interesting, especially the questions that kind of come out of, um, out of nowhere um, and often are the kinds of questions that really uh, are most informative. Um, I attended an emergency meeting with the South Peace Archives. Uh, South Peace Archives is making a change to their bylaw. Um, currently, any municipal government that provides funding uh, to the archives has a seat on their board, which means their board is becoming uh, very large and not at all workable. So the recommendation uh, was that uh, members who are appointed by municipal government are not voting members. Um, and so that will reduce the amount of people they need to have on their board. Uh, if we were still voting members, they would need, the appointed members could only make up 25% of their board. So with seven or to 10 uh, municipalities providing funding, um, you can see how large that board would have to be. Uh, so at their annual general meeting, which will be um, at the end of May, um, those bylaw changes will be voted in. And then finally, I also attended the recovery uh, conference. Um, most of the things that uh, I thought were exceptional, uh, Councillor Pallott and Councillor O'Toole have talked about. I wanted to mention the establishment of CORE, which is a Canadian Centre for Recovery Excellence. Um, this is an, uh, a research and data gathering organization established by um, Marshall Smith, the Chief of Staff, and uh, Premier Smith. Um, and while it is uh, based in Alberta, uh, it's really its intent is to be sharing the learnings and the data that they accumulate uh, internationally. And um, I also had an opportunity to talk to the ADM of Minister um, 
Williams for Addictions and Mental Health uh, to question him about the recovery center that we're all waiting to hear about. He is uh, very uh, positive that we will hear a firm public announcement uh, with, within the month um, and that there is no issues going forward at this time. So that's good news. And um, I... If I had any concerns at all about uh, the conference we were at is that the focus was really on recovery and not uh, particularly focused on mental health. Mental health and addictions do go hand in hand, but there are lots of people who deal with um, mental issues that are not suffering from addictions. And I don't uh, want to see that population um, lost um, because for one thing that Encourage their, encourages them to travel down the path of addictions, which of course we don't want. Um, but I am really positive that this will be a better approach to um, addictions and mental health than our neighbors to the West are taking, and I believe we will see good success. That's my report. Thanks, Mayor Clayton. Thanks for that, Councillor Blackmore. Uh, my report is relatively brief. I wanted to thank um, everyone who participated and attended the State of the State Officer, Mr. Burke, uh, as well as to the President, Vanessa Sheehan, and our, the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, Tanya Oliver, as well as John Resbit, the Superintendent for the Grand Prairie Police Service. Uh, I thought it the format was went well. I appreciate administration and the work that they did to put on the event. Um, it was well attended. It went well. And now you can watch it online for free. So I think it sort of ticked a lot of boxes for people. If you wanted to come have lunch, you could. If you wanted to watch it for free later, you can. Uh, also had the opportunity to have uh, coffee with a urologist considering to move to Grand Prairie, Dr. Cobed. And he, um, I understand, has now signed on to come to Grand Prairie. So it was great to meet him. Uh, had a Mid-Size City Mayor's Caucus meeting uh, where we talked about um, um, a new um, uh, resource that is being brought on by the organization uh, to support in data collection and information sharing. Um, they uh, collectively, we had as an organization of hired uh, Canadian strategy group to not only do data collection, but to utilize um, the group in regards to our advocacy priority initiatives and really to further and advance the conversations that have already started with that group. Um, had the privilege to have coffee with our MP, Chris Workington, um, who was home for a few days, and, and catch up on how things are going there and catch him up on work that we are doing. Um, also, as mentioned by Councillor Berg, or Councillor O'Connor, rather, um, the U15 Tier 2 Girls Hockey Championship was here, and I had the opportunity to bring greetings on behalf of the Council and the organization. Um, there were six girls teams and I asked some mums in the arena how they thought the Grand Prairie team would do and they thought that they would place third and then what do you know, they dug down and they won the entire championships. So well done Grand Prairie, well done to the girls team and thank you to all the parents that put on that event. We um, really have done an excellent job as a community in my opinion stepping up to be a game city and this is just another one of those events that we exceeded um, the expectations and had a great event. So uh, thank you to all the volunteers and the parents who helped put on that event. Also attended, um, I was went away, had an opportunity to go visit some family during spring break last week. And with that, had still had some work to do. Had to jump on with the time change, a 6.30 in the morning call. That was wonderful while I was away, but I uh, had a privilege to speak with a senior administrator of MP, um, Minister Rodriguez from uh, Minister of Transportation. Um, that was uh, the Community Rail Advocacy Alliance had a, a, a meeting with the senior administrative or a Zoom call to talk about um, how the North has impacted on rail disparity and services that we still continue to face. So that was a good call. And last but not least, just because we're ending a little bit shorter, I'll remind people if you're looking for information about the City of Grand Prairie, we have an exceptional opportunity. You go to engage.cityofgp.com. You can sign up for newsletters. We also have a text service that will tell you when your snow removal was coming to your neighbourhood or when there's a closure at a facility. And it's immediate. It's very brief. It's great information. So I encourage people to sign up for that and get information instantly from the city. With that, I will call the meeting adjourned and wish you all a great rest of your day. Thank you.